Citizens Advisory Board, also known as NNM CAB. Good morning, Mr. Valdez. Thank you for joining us on KRSN. Good morning, Nancy, and good morning to all the wonderful listeners out there in Los Alamos this morning. Well, thanks. Um, can you give us a little history of the Citizens Advisory Board? How was it created? Sure. Um, the right now there's eight Citizens Advisory Boards throughout the country. Uh, Los Alamos, the Northern New Mexico Citizens Advisory Board for Los Alamos is one of those eight. Ours was particularly established in 1997 and we've got a national charter that we live by and it's basically uh, advising the Department of Energy and, and the employees of Los Alamos on the cleanup efforts for the legacy and Cold War uh, back in the 60s and 70s. So that's kind of what we're all about. Mm -hmm. And um, how do they determine who will be members? We go through a very strict process. We're always looking for members. Right now, I think we're up to about 20 members. And we're, um, I'm proud to say that we're one of the best uh, citizens advisory boards throughout the country. I've been to several uh, the other uh, sites, and they always use Los Alamos uh, Advisory Board here as one of the standard setters. Um, because of the diversity that we have here, uh, because of the good relationships that we have here, but basically, what, what happens is when we find interested members or people that want to be members, uh, we, we send a nomination packet uh, twice a year up to Washington, D.C., and it goes through very many hands in the Department of Energy, including uh, the General Counsel, and it also uh, has a, a last stop at the White House. So even the White House has their, their finger on the pulse in terms of who is qualified to be a member. We, we, they really don't like to see conflicts of interest, so if somebody's working uh, for the labs or has a, a contract and, and some kind of interest that way, then they're probably um, not suited to be a member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, how did you personally get involved? Well, I personally got involved because I retired about five and a half years ago, and I wanted to get off my couch and put my remote control down. So, <laughs> yeah, I saw this advertisement in the newspaper and I thought, well, something that I want to do that I have never done uh, in my past. And so I, I, I've done budgets and finance throughout my life. I wanted to do something totally, totally different that I can actually learn something new. Mm -hmm. And so environmental cleanup, I thought this, is a, this would be a good avenue to pursue. And, and so um, I put my name in the hat, and, and luckily enough, I was selected uh, to sit on the cap. How long is your term, or how long is the general term on the board? Usually what happens is we go through three two-year terms. So any member can only be on the advisory board for six years, and then once that, that six-year term uh, comes up, then they have to fall off of the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to ask you a little bit about how are you involved in this, um, what's going on with the WIP and, and all that right now? Because you had um, the energy cleanup and, and they had to change all that recently. Yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of strange, Nancy, for the last 14, 15 years, uh, WIP has not had any incidents whatsoever. They've had uh -huh. a really, really clean record. And I've actually taken a tour down in those um, those mines down there, um, just to give the, the listeners a perspective. The Carlsbad Cavern is about 720 feet down at the deepest point. The Whip mines are 2100, so they're three times deeper into the ground than what Carlsbad Caverns are. And so there's a lot, there's nothing but salt. Everywhere you look, everything is salt. And it so happens that two incidents occurred uh, within a week, a week and a half of each other. They had that truck fire down below and a separate uh, unrelated incident uh, with a radiation leak. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're concerned about what happens there because we accepts most of the true waste that was almost takes off of the hill. The governor wanted to see as much of that above ground true waste moved off the hill to whip 
as fast as possible, due mainly to the, the fire season. Everybody knows how, how dangerous how dangerous it is to, to, to have that nuclear waste sitting up uh, on the hill with the fires coming so close. Um, and so um, the 3706 campaign, which is basically 3,706 cubic meters of waste, uh, we agreed to move as fast as possible from, from Los Alamos down to WIP. And so we're concerned with WIP because we want to make sure that we get all of that done by the end of June, by the end of this summer. And, and we're getting close, mm -hmm. despite the, the fact that, that, you know, WIP will shut down for a while. So we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Okay, so I'm guessing you guys were involved just in terms of as an advisory board of um, trying to support their problem solving? Yeah, you know, they had another place to send it. Yeah, we get daily updates from WIP as to what they're doing every day down there just to make sure that, that we know what's going on and we know that they're working as fast as possible, as carefully as possible, to make sure that they get everything cleaned up and, and started again as safe as possible. Risk, risk is important. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand you have a meeting coming up. Is, can you tell us about that? Is it open to the public? It is open to the public, Nancy. As a matter of fact, we have a combined committee meeting scheduled for tomorrow, as a matter of fact, at the Cities of Gold uh, Conference Center. And that will start about 2 o'clock, and, and uh, it will usually run until about 4 o'clock. Um, and so this one isn't a full board meeting, but we, we do encourage the public to attend and, and as many board members as possible uh, because there are usually are things that we vote on and so uh, we, we really need to have a, a quorum there. But tomorrow we'll be listening to uh, some representatives of the Department of Energy and Los Alamos National Security on what the proposed campaign uh, rollout would look like next. So now that 3706 is wrapping up, we want to take a look at what would be the next logical campaign to undertake uh, mm -hmm. for the maps. Yeah, so that's coming up tomorrow, and we encourage everybody that's interested to come and sit with us. And yeah. anybody that might have any, you know, even an inkling of an interest of possibly serving on the board, that would be a great way to get a better idea of what they do and, and how they conduct business, too. That would be great. We're always looking for, for board members. Uh, we have a wonderful executive committee over in um, in Pawakia run by Manish uh, with Bridget and William. And and if, if somebody's interested, all they have to do is talk to Manish and she could get the ball rolling for them. Mm -hmm. we, we, do, we do also have a football meetings that um, usually run from 1 to 5. We do, we do those every other month. And so we have them coming up in May, also at the City of Gold. So I look at your agenda, and at 2 p.m. approval of agenda, the presentations are actually a little bit later um, at 3 o'clock. Presentation by Pete Maggiore, Department of Energy and L.A. Field Office, and Jeff Musso, Los Alamos National Security. Would it be okay if people showed up just for the presentations at 3? Yeah, usually, usually from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, we take care of uh, board business, approval of minutes, looking at old business, uh, what's coming up on our on our plate in terms of agendas, uh, subcommittees, uh, draft recommendations, what does the budget look like. So we take care of board business usually for the first hour or so, mm -hmm. and then the presentations start after that. So yeah, 3 o'clock is, is the time for the presentation. What do you expect to learn tomorrow? What I expect to learn tomorrow, what I'm hoping that all the board members learn tomorrow is uh, what is the campaign rollout going to look like from here forward. So now that we've learned that the framework agreement, the 3706 agreement, was quite a success, and thanks in, in, in part to all of the hard work that Los Alamos has done up there over the last year, it looks like campaign, short-term campaign rollouts are, are the way to go. And so what we want to do is, what are the next logical campaigns that the board can have the Department of Energy prioritize? Okay. Well, um, we are talking with Mr. Carlos Valdez. He's the chairman of the Northern New Mexico Citizens Advisory Board. 
Um, what else would you like to teach us about your board this morning? It's, it's a, we really are the voice of Northern New Mexico, and I'm really grateful that the Department of Energy has this type of activity going on to where they want to listen to what the public has to say in terms of what the cleanup looks like, how the cleanup should roll out, what's important to the people of Northern New Mexico in terms of water quality and air quality. And in, I think that it's important for the listeners to know up there that what is it that Los Alamos is actually doing? Because we're an independent uh, entity, a unit that listens to what the lab has to say in terms of cleanup, and then we advise them as to what we think the direction that they should take. Mm hmm Interesting. So you must have to, you know, do a lot of research and things before you come up with your, what you believe is the best. These presentations that the Department of Energy and Los Alamos provide are really, really informative. When I first started on this board, I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge or experience as to what was happening up there, but once you sit through a few of these, then you start to understand exactly what's going on, and um, and, and you're, you're able to contribute in a positive manner. Okay. Great. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having me, Nancy. You're welcome.